can participate in providing the right sort of support uh, for those who need it. Simple as that. Five minute call, Honourable Marion Street. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Um, I will. Um, well, I want to cover some things that may not actually have been covered in the debate, but I will uh, try to keep to a third reading speech. Mr. Speaker, um, it is a bit galling to have Johnny Come Lately's in the National Party uh, protest that Labour did nothing for nine years in housing. And I'd just like to go back a bit because clearly the new members have swallowed hook, line and sinker the, uh, the spin that their seniors have fed them without question. The fact that Labour came in after 13,000 state houses were sold and proceeded to build 8,600. 8,600 houses we started to build, we built or acquired during those nine years because it does take longer to build and acquire them than it does to get rid of them or to sell them as the previous National Party did. And I won't even be bothered traversing all the other ranges of options that we put in place to address housing affordability, such as the welcome home loan, such as shared equity, all of those programs that were designed to help people into their first homes and the, the newcomers in the national government, Mr. Mr Speaker, have been fed a line by their seniors uh, that they have swallowed without question. Mr Speaker, what we have here, as others have noted before me, is a minister uh, with a, an, a devastating combination, actually, a devastating combination in Dr Smith of being extraordinarily effective as a minister and almost always wrong, almost always wrong. Really effective, he knows how to get things done, but almost always wrong. And this is another example. This procedure uh, that is uh, operationalised in this bill will strip back Housing New Zealand. It transfers its needs assessment function over to MSD. It transfers money to the third sector for housing purposes, which we don't oppose, but we wish it were sufficient and not simply an abrogation of the government's own responsibility to be the leader and the prime provider in uh, affordable housing and social housing in this country. Instead of shoveling it off to an under-resourced uh, third sector, the government should be stepping up and making its own moves, taking its own actions to address the needs of those who are unable to enter the private rental market through no fault of their own, or even enter home ownership which is an even more remote dream. So, Mr Speaker, Labor opposes this bill, not because everything in it is wrong, but because everything in it is either wrong or inadequate. And it is simply not good enough. It is simply not good enough for this government to uh, bring in a process of reviewable tenancies so that that shadow will hang over every tenant in a state house. When are they going to review my tenancy? When am I going to be told that I can't have this house anymore? That is not how to build secure communities. And that is what social housing ought to be about, not only about providing, uh, providing housing for the poor, but also using the state's leverage and the state's capacity to build secure, contributing communities and not simply consider this an irritation or a monkey on the back of government that it would rather dispose of. Mr Speaker, this is not a good bill. This is a piece of legislation which uh, will be limited in its lifetime. It will be limited in its lifetime because when Labor takes office, we will be keen to address affordable housing in the multitude of ways that work, not simply these single actions that penalise people who currently use uh, state housing because they need to for the security and the safety of their families. This is a punitive bill and Labor will not support it. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Good speech. Jan Logie. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Green Party also fundamentally opposes this social housing reform bill. 
And we oppose it because we believe in homes, not just houses. And we believe that homes are important to the foundations of our society. We oppose this bill because we know if we have a good, warm, dry, affordable homes for everyone, we will all benefit through reduced health costs, improved educational outcomes, and improved economic productivity. We believe this because the evidence tells us this. We oppose this bill because we honestly value the tangata whenua and community and voluntary sector. And we recognise that they have a lot to contribute to community housing through their own value base and not being turned into arms of the state, which is what this bill attempts to do. We oppose this bill because we do not believe that the Ministry of Social Development or Work and Income will improve services for people needing housing support. In fact, we fear the opposite. We oppose this bill because we think the priority is building community, not temporary shelter.